Welcome back. Well, hope you're having a good morning. Well, let's get into some fundamental analysis. And to help us out with that, we have Amnish Agarwal, Head of Research at Prabhudas Yadar, who joins us on the show. Hi, Amnish. Thanks a lot for joining in and good to see you in as always. What did your view on this entire EV play? You know, we had the management of Ola, who was sounding very aggressive the last few, uh, you know, couple of days or so ago with regard to market share, with the, regard to profitability as well. And we could potentially have a new kid on the block, which will be Aether. Uh, how are you viewing this space? We have the incumbents, the larger names like Bajaj, who are making good inroads and are in fact gaining market share as we have seen in the last five or six months. So your view? You see, the space actually looks very interesting more from the two-wheeler angle. Because uh, in two-wheeler, you see, people usually look at economy and EVs actually provide a very good uh, economic value as far as your consumers are concerned. Now, coming to the stock specific, I think the uh, your... EV players, they have been gaining ground except for last year when due to the fame subsidy issues, the sales growth was not that that uh, high. But having said that, whether it is Ether, which is backed by, say, your hero, or whether these are players like TVS and Bajaj, they are also making, you can say, big inroads into it. And given the fact that these guys already have huge distribution muscle with them, I think over a period of time, all the existing your players will also make a significant inroads into the EV segment. So, per se, the outlook on, you can say, EV companies look positive. But having said that, uh, as the larger players like Bajaj, Hero, TVS, they have started making big inroads into the segment. I think among the uh, new players which have entered the segment, I think only a few will actually be profitable and sustain in the long term. Okay, so which ones do you like, but uh, Abnish, then? How do you play it? You see, the main thing is that if you look at, say, last 15 to 18 months, people have been trying to play it more through some auto angst. But I think always uh, direct play is always better. So as of now, I think uh, we have got only one direct play, which is Zola, which I think seems to be not cheap. But in the long term, I think being the largest player, it seems very well placed. And even Ether, I think the losses are high, the losses are mounting. But given the fact that it is backed by Hero at some point of time, I think the company will also start gaining traction. So I think there, there are two ways to play. One will be to, you can say, bank on players, whether it is TVS, Bajaj or Hero, which are making a sizable inroads into this segment. Or the second is if you want to go for a pure play, as of now, I think it is only Ola Electric. And around, say, 100, 105, 10, the stock looks reasonably interesting. Uh, <clears throat> got that. Uh, no, uh, fair enough. You know, I just want to pull up Paytm. Uh, Paytm had a sharp move yesterday, ended about 4 5% higher. Uh, and that block is uh, uh, going to happen. I mean, uh, and we put that out on Chatter as well with Nimesh. Uh, that block is going very much uh, sort of on the anvil over the next uh, one or two days. Will that be a sort of, you know, a clearing event for the stock? And then it kind of looks ahead uh, in a more sustained fashion. We will see. Uh, but uh, in the last 20 minutes, it, it moved about uh, 20 rupees. Any thoughts here, Amnish? I don't know if you have coverage or uh, any thoughts on this one. You see, Paytm, one can only say that the things are improving. For example, they, they got a big cut in their revenues and all when uh, when this entire payment banks, uh, they got some, you can say, fresh from RBI and it got banned. But I think in their existing business, which the otherwise your payments business, which they are doing, I think they are, they are very well placed there and they are growing. So in terms of profitability, may take at least say three more years. But I think the your uh, at the beta level, they are growing over there. And uh, one can only say that from these levels, I think the worst might be over for the company in terms of say numbers or in terms of news flows as of now. And uh, in the medium to long term, I think the stock price will be a reflection of how they actually grow their remaining businesses and if there is any way back, if they can get, you can say, compliant in the part of the business, which, which they have been asked to stop by RPI. Okay, so that's uh, Paytm. Let's see if there's any kind of favorable development. Of course, uh, Nimesh has been telling us that maybe uh, there could be uh, some sort of interesting investor action in Paytm. <laughs> He's been picking that up in uh, D Street Chatter. Uh, Amnish, uh, hi. So the snack makers have uh, something to cheer about today with this lowering of uh, GST. Uh, uh, any interest in these names? Pratap, uh, Bikaji, Gopal Snacks, any views here? You see, among all these companies, if you look at, say, the Pratap and particularly your Gopal, so they are more centered on, you can say, rupee 5, 10, 15 kind of a packs in, in the snacking, snacking category. 
whereas bika ji is more on you can say family packs more on sweets and all, all those things so to that extent i think the play plays are very very different in these in uh, these two kind of companies but having said that in the longer term the sustainability of uh, bika ji looks better than the other two because uh, when you are selling more of a 5 10 rupee packs then your margins fluctuate a lot with the fluctuation in the raw material prices because you don't want to lose that 5 rupee or 10 rupee price point so uh, difficult for me to take a call specifically but structurally i think bika ji seems to be better placed as of Amnesh, uh, final question before we let you go. Uh, crude oil prices have come down. We have seen price hikes that have been taken by some of these pain companies, and the pain companies actually have been big underperformers. The incumbents, Berger, Asian, uh, Kansai as well. In the last one year, virtually unmoved, and the Nifty is up twenty five percent. Do you think the time has come now to give them a look? Quality companies. The new uh, player has come in there, and uh, it seems there are a couple of tailwinds as well. Your take? You see, one key was not good for the paint companies, and the reason why they underperformed in the last twelve months was predominantly because uh, people feared that grazing will come, the competitive intensity will increase, and so the profitability of many of these companies will get impacted. Now, two things here. First, being that as far as your margins are concerned, uh, their margins you can presume literally peaked out in FY twenty four. Now, with the And one Q, the there was a some sort of a margin hit. But having said that, with the price increase which has happened in the crude, which has softened, the benefit will be seen in the third quarter of this year. But having said that, people are of the view that the increase in the active intensity post Grazim's entry or the impact of Grazim as of now is not that much. And while two Q due to rains and all might not be great, three Q would be something to watch out for. But our take is that the impact of grazim is not going to say be visible or fade away in the next one quarter or two quarter it's it's a it's a very long game and as, as and the paint is a category where you need to build it brick by brick so even now i will not say rule out grazim you can say hitting back in the long term because it's it's a it's a marathon but having said that some of these stocks they were big underperformers but from the bottom they have also rallied by 20% so there still might be some steam left in many of these stocks but particularly i think maybe kansai and uh, some of the other sector you can say the mid sized companies they they are cheaper but many of these large companies they they are not uh, very cheap given by the fact that the one q was not very good so i would be i would say still very cautious in making fresh entry into many of these names because post the run up which has happened in the last say 3 to 4 months in particular i think we might be looking at in the near term maybe max 5 7% or 10% more from you sure uh, you know uh, what looks best here as far as private financials go you see as, a, <clears throat> as far as uh, private financials go i think all the frontline private banks as uh, we have been talking earlier also that if you look at the last couple of years so psus Rallied very sharply, and today most of the private banks, whether it is ICICI, ICICI, I think is an exception. HDFC, X is interest in Kotak, so they are trading way below where their your long term price to book values are. It doesn't mean essentially that HDFC will again go back to three and a half, four, or even interest in will go, but definitely the way these companies are poised, I think there there is some room for them to catch up. Maybe say another ten, fifteen percent over the next fifteen to eighteen months can't be ruled out. but having said that i think in terms of numbers one should not expect a bit too much because your uh, deposit rates are rising the interest rate cut is round the corner and in the initial phase of interest rate cut banks actually will see some more compression coming on their names so it is i think purely i would term it as a you can say the sectoral rotation which is coming in and a sector which has or a segment i would say rather which has underperformed in the last 15 to 18 months i think there is catch up in the banks which can happen but it would be more in the medium term uh, it's not that on an everyday basis the banks will just continue to move okay so that's a view on banks um, amnish uh, any thoughts on uh, easy trip planners i don't know if the company or the stock is on your uh, under your coverage or not but there's so much news flow right they are getting into ev buses manufacturing and now apparently there's a board meeting later this week to consider more acquisitions any views uh you see we are tracking the tourism space but uh, i am not on top of what is happening on the you can see new forest of the company
Okay, so since you mentioned tourism, uh, is it hotels? Um, what is your the best play for you? Uh, if we are looking at uh, you know anyone who wants to add a bit of uh, tourism to the portfolio, now there is a tourism index and there are passive products on that as well. But individual stocks, what would you pick? You see, there are actually several ways to play tourism today. For example, hotel stocks last two three years they have rallied. Still, I think the uh, in the coming this quarter. I would say mixed, but in the coming quarters, I think the bookings and all, they have been pretty strong for all the hotel companies. So I think hotel companies uh, look good from here. From here on, not multi baggers but I would say some sort of a secular, uh, you can say low to mid kind of returns can come over the next two to three years. Then one can play also play through something like, you can say aviation, where Indigo has been doing very well, more like a consolidated market. So in, Indigo is, I think, one stock we have been very positive about in addition to it, your uh, Shelly and Lemon Tea Tree are the two other stocks we, which look good, uh, quite interesting to us. I, IRCTC is another stock which we cover, but uh, I think it is in a zone where the profit growth is not that high and the valuations we don't have uh, much scope to read it from the current levels. So I think uh, one is your aviation and the second is hotel. These two segments look good as far as tourism is concerned. 